Hello everyone, today I'm here to talk to you about Studio H's Suspects. This is a new, not escape room, but like murder mystery solving style game where you play as this lady, which is Claire Harper. Effectively, you play as her and she is investigating things. You're doing this as a team. The box suggests one to six players uh, and a 10 plus age rating. Now, there are three cases in this box for you to play through. They are not really linked, but you know, there is sort of, you can play them through very logically of one, two, three. Now let's jump in and see roughly how it's played. When you open the box, you're gonna pick out case one, two, or three. That's gonna come with a deck of cards that you're gonna be working through, and also an envelope. If you can't guess already, don't open the envelope, that's going to be the answers uh, basically to the whole case, spelling out the things you need to work out. And then each case is gonna have some additional materials. So that might be say a map or a, uh, a pamphlet for the event that you're at or something like that. Each of them is going to have a introduction. Once you've read through that, it's going to present you the questions so you know exactly what you need to find out going into the investigation. Now it's going to tell you to start with a card and to do that, you're just going to flick through the deck of cards. And I'm not gonna to show too many pictures um, of too many different cases and that because I don't wanna spoil things because this is it's very much something that is a one-time playthrough because once you've done it, you'll know the answers to the questions being posed to you. So once you've found the first card in the deck and maybe turned over the map that you've been given, you can then do a variety of different things. Now there's three main things that you can do and find. You can go and talk to people and that's normally sort of a red icon. You can find items and they're normally yellow numbered icons. And you can also visit locations, which is like a blue numbered place. The entire deck is numbered and those cards are also that blue, yellow and red coloring. So it's nice and simple to flip through. You're not gonna get any spoilers apart from maybe seeing someone's face on the top side. Uh, on the back side is where all the sort of the blurb, the text and the information is that you're going to get. So as long as you're not uh, looking at both sides and you're just flicking through the deck, you then find the card for the location, the item or the person that you want to talk to, and then you turn it over. There is effectively no restrictions to what you're doing. You, Wherever you see a number in one of those colors, you can go and do it. You can go to that room. Maybe it's locked, but you can try and go to that room. You can talk to that person, and that might give you follow-up questions that you can ask to them. Normally, uh, when you talk to someone, you'll get some information and then be able to ask them maybe about the person that's sort of had an accident happen to them or maybe the other people, and you can glean information that way. As I said, at the beginning of the game, you're going to, in the introduction, have read the questions you need to answer. Now, the way this works is, after so many cards from the deck, after you've gone through so many, you can make your predictions. Now. You can change these predictions at any time, but if you stick with that and you keep that, or any of them in place, you're gonna get more points at the end of the game. Now, points don't necessarily mean prizes in this game, but it does mean that you'll get a slightly different ending. And each one has you know, multiple endings depending on your score. When you've worked through the first chunk of cards, you're then gonna write your answers down if you have any answers to the questions and then you can carry on again. Unlike other games in this sort of style, you carry on. You always go through the whole deck. Now, there's the different steps between that, before that happens, that you might want to have made your mind up on some of things for more points, but even once you've worked through all of the deck, you can change your mind, and you're still gonna get points, just not many. Uh, you, you know. If you get it wrong, however, you're gonna get zero. So it is worth changing your mind if you're thinking you're wrong by the end, rather than holding on for that sort of, that's not right answer in the hope that you're gonna get the points. You might as well sort of change your mind. Once you've gone through the deck, you're going to crack open that envelope that you put aside at the start of the game, and that will then tell you what really happened 
and more importantly, the clues that should have given it away to you. And then you can score yourself and read the appropriate ending. I mean, you can read all of them, but the one you got is the one that your points have afforded you. And I really, let's just jump straight into it. I really, I really enjoy the fact that it doesn't just say, this is the answer. It says, this is the answer, and this is the bit of information, or this is the person that said something that should have maybe made you look there, and then this was that, and you're like, ah, okay. So we did get that wrong, and I must admit, on certainly on the, I think it was the second one, we didn't do too well score-wise, and as soon as we turned it over, we went, ah, oh, we completely overlooked that, but now it's there, yes, and we should have gone, and when we did this, you know, because you've done everything, you've seen all the cards, you've spoken to everyone, asked everyone everything. There are a couple of times when once you've done something, you can't do something else. But apart from that, it was like, OK, we, yeah, we had the information in front of us. We just went down a different path and didn't quite get there. But I really enjoy how it sort of, it is spelled out. It's not sort of just, this is the right answer. If you've not got that, you're wrong. It's a, this is the right answer and why. So that was a really good part of this. And I do actually enjoy being able to go through the full deck rather than sort of thinking, oh, we can't go through any more of the deck. We'll lose points for our answers. No, you've locked those answers in. You can change them if you want, but you've locked them in at the higher points. So just go through the deck and find out everything. You can change your mind right up into the end. So it gives the game a bit more of a relaxed feel rather than a sort of a pressure. You know, you've got the pressure of trying to get it right, but you've not got the pressure of, oh, we've not got all the information, but we need to guess. Well, yeah, you have that at certain stages, but you're then going to get the more information and you can re-guess if you want. We have played through with four people, so not the full six. And to be honest, I'm not sure I'd want to go above four. I think, you know, um, you could play it through solo. I'm, I like in these sort of games to be able to discuss things with other people. So I'd stick away from solo experience for that. But certainly for me, two, three or four would be, um, well, would be fine. Four, I don't think, again, you wouldn't want to go maybe above that. Just to, you've got a lot of cards spread across the table. Don't get me wrong. And when you get a new card, you're going to read it out. There's a decent amount of text. You're going to read that out. Everyone can hear it. But then there's not, two, you know, you've got, okay, how many people, what shall we say, how many people want to go here? How many people want to go there? Have a bit of a vote, maybe. But I did think with four, we managed to go round the table and write, what do you think we should do this time? Then the next person, what do you think we should do? And I think with five or six, you might have too many differing opinions. Certainly trying to do it before those steps of, uh, like, this is how many cards you get before you have to make your first sort of decisions on and go for the maximum points and I think six first of all you'd struggle to get well round our table six round the table comfortably being able to see the cards because otherwise you're quite a way away and there's a lot of text on it so you'd have to keep picking it up and reading it and then passing it back and so between not having enough decisions to make for six there was enough for four we you know it kept all four people uh, immersed and invested in the game throughout each of the cases. So really happy with that. There's a couple of nice little mechanics that just make things uh, work in this game. So uh, not to give too much a uh, hint away, and I'll just show a little bit of a clip here. Sometimes you might get an item and it might you might need to test it against other things. Um, that's got sort of like a line on it and then the other card will maybe have a line that matches up when you put the two next to each other that was a really clever way of sort of in one case having a key and being able to try it in multiple doors to see which one it fit that was a nice touch because i'm not sure how they'd have got around that otherwise without maybe like an app or something so that just like line meant you could match the cards up and be like, doesn't match this one, oh, it matches this one. And then stuff happens. So they're not going to go into any more spoilers, but that was a nice sort of little feature. Another one I did slightly allude to is that some decisions, once you've made a decision to do something, it does say you have to remove another card. So like, you know, you've got an A or a B option, 
There's not many of these. I, f I kind of wish maybe there was one or two more because I thought it was a really cool part, but it did mean that if you did A, the B card was removed. So that was nice. Obviously at the end, once you've finished, you can go and read the other one. And sometimes it maybe would have just given you a slightly different bit of information. Maybe it would have got you something earlier, um, but otherwise, um, you know, it didn't drastically change uh, the outcome. When it comes to production quality, I really like like the big sort of map um, bits and the introduction. They're nice and big. You can read them. It's got the questions written down so you can keep referring back to that. Um, it, there's sort of a couple of extra bits for each case and then like the envelope with that with the answers in it. Um, you've got the cards sort of quite nice art, artwork, you know, it, it sort of it brings some of the locations and bits and pieces to life when you see them. Um, you know what the characters look like because they've got their picture there when they're talking. So it's not just block of text. It is a lot of text on most of the cards, though. So if you're not sort of happy reading out in front of other people, um, maybe play with someone that is um, and maybe younger people. Again, the box does say 10 plus, and this is maybe why if you're reading a lot, and it's, you know, murder themes and stuff. Um, if you're reading a lot, if someone's not really vibing with that sort of game, it might not be for them. For us, you know, a couple of us read uh, and then maybe someone else had the decision to make of what we wanted to do next and stuff. So it just sort of worked with our group. But yeah, production wise, you know, yeah, they could do little extras here and there for flair, but they weren't really needed to sort of make the experience work. They'd be sort of extras on top that would just be sort of that flair item. I think the biggest compliment we can pay the game really is that once we would played one act or one case we wanted to go on to the next and you know if there's another box we would certainly be interested because they were some quite cool stories. I did enjoy the fact we went through the full deck so we got the full story. They were seemingly well written there was a couple of typos, like one uh, had the name Oliver and he was also referred to Olivier on one card, just random. But, you know, other than that, there wasn't really any problems. Uh, you know, I'd go, we go through the story. We really enjoyed it and we would like to sort of have more stories told to us in this sort of style. And while we were trying to deduce the answers to these questions, we generally enjoyed that sort of thing. You know, if you're enjoying murder mystery deduction-y sort of things and, you know, escape rooms and adventure games, well, I think Suspects could be a game that would work well at your table. So there you have it. Check out Suspects if you think it's going to be for you. Hopefully this video has helped. If you think it has, give it a like, subscribe and all that sort of jazz. And until next time, I'm Oliver East signing out.